Welcome to our lecture online. Here we have some examples of how to apply our newfound skill factoring the difference of squares. Again, it may not exactly look like the difference of squares. We may need to manipulate a little bit before it actually looks like the difference of two squares. For example, over here, a squared minus 16b squared, we can rewrite this as follows. We can rewrite this as a squared minus the quantity 4b quantity squared like that. It's the same thing, but now clearly you have the difference of two squares, which can then be factored as a plus 4b times a minus 4b. Over here, the same thing. Notice we have a quantity squared minus 25, but 25 is 5 squared, so this can be written as a quantity 2x minus 3 squared minus 5 squared. Now we have the difference of two squares, so this can be factored as 2x minus 3 plus 5 times 2x minus 3 minus 5. And of course, that can then be further factored as follows. This can then be written as 2x minus 3 plus 5, which would be 2x plus 2 times the quantity 2x minus 8. And that's a poor looking 8. Let me try that again. There we go. And then you realize you can factor out a 2 from here and from here. So this is 2 times 2 or 4 times x plus 1 times that would be then x minus 4. And that would be then the final solution, the final factored form of our original problem. All right, now let's take a look over here. By no means does that look like the difference of two squares. However, if we're going to go ahead and try to factor that first by grouping, let's group this together and let's group these two together. So here we can see the common factor here would be two times x. So we have two times x times what's left would be x squared uh, minus, uh, that would be four. And here we have, if we factor out a minus one times what we have left would be x squared minus four. And then you can see that here and here, we have a common factor of x squared minus 4. So we can factor that out. So it gives us x squared minus 4 multiplied times 2x minus 1. Now you can look at this and say, I can rewrite this as follows. This can be written as x squared minus 2 squared and then 2x minus 1. And finally, this again is the difference of two squares. So this can be written as x plus 2 times x minus 2 times she's really not happy the reason why she's not happy is she's standing in front of a closed door and she wants to get through that door and we're not going to let her so that's her complaining Anyway, continue on with our problem. So this is 2x minus 1, and so this is the final factored form of our original problem. So even though it may not look like it's a difference of squares, when you start factoring it by grouping and so forth, you may end up with a portion of it that is actually the difference of squares, and then you use the technique. Here, you take a look at this and go, well, by no means that the difference of squares because it's x to the fourth minus y to the fourth, but you can actually write this as follows. This can be written as x squared to the second power minus y squared to the second power. And now it has the proper format of the difference of squares, which can therefore be written as x squared plus y squared multiplied times x squared minus y squared. And then you look at this and go, well, that's a difference of squares. So that can be also be factored as follows. So this is x squared plus y squared times x plus y times x minus y. And so if you put a few equal signs there, then you can see that's the final factored form of this. So even though it didn't look like it was the difference of squares, you can manipulate it first in that form, do your magic, and then again, you realize that one of the portions of it can be factored again. And of course, I probably should put equal signs here as well. So you can see that this is the format. And that is how we recognize things that look like the difference of two squares and then apply the technique to factor it properly. That's how it's done.